Testing one, two, three, four. New microphone looks good. So far, so good. Thank you very much for joining us. If you are counting down to our beginning for our weather overtime video blog, and as of right now, things are again very quiet for the most part. We do have again the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms for tonight. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up here in just a little while. Looks like everything is doing pretty good at this point, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. Good Monday evening, everybody live and direct from downtown, well, from usually downtown Memphis, mostly right now uh, here in the friendly confines of House Onyx. It is, again, a fairly quiet evening uh, here in the Mid-South area, but we don't have a lot going on immediately. We did have a less hot day today. Wish we could say that about tomorrow. Not going to be happening anytime soon because of the fact that we'll be getting some hotter temperatures in here. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Never been here before. Thanks for joining us for Weather Overtime. Video online, exclusive video weather over, weather overtime available again from News Channel 3. More information about the forecast in the blue bar down here. Social media there there and over there. You can tell a little bit more about what I've got in the way of different amounts of forecasts and social media. You can pretty much find me just about any place out there with your forecasts and other science and all kinds of other stuff as well. So thanks for joining us. We'll give you an update as to what's going on out across the Mid-South. Currently, let's take a look and see what's happening with radar. We don't have, again, a lot going on just past the uh, half an hour point from about 8 o'clock. A lot of moisture hanging in place over the metro area. Again, pretty typical for areas near the radar display. The heaviest activity by far has been going on into northern Mississippi again this evening, and much of what we've been looking at has been, again, these isolated, wandering thunderstorms. There's no storm systems. There's nothing in the way of anything involving uh, huge amounts of wind pushing through to give all of this moisture any place to go. So it's just kind of hanging in place and developing as we go throughout the course of the rest of the evening. So we're not seeing anything, really, that's going to be driving things forward to the west of I-55 between there and areas around the Mississippi River between I-55 and the river in Mississippi. That that's where we're seeing uh, the heaviest activity. Crowder, uh, east of Marks, drifting to the west, right around the Lambert area and just to the southwest of the Batesville area. That's where we're also seeing some uh, showers and some pretty good thunderstorms out there as well. We do not have anything in the way of severe weather. A few leftover showers, a few thunderstorms back around Duncan, right over the Mississippi River, heading down toward Watson in parts of... Uh, eastern Arkansas, but not really much of anything going on there. Oxford also in Mississippi picking up some scattered showers, developing, developing, drifting, collapsing, starting back over again. That's pretty much what these things do, and they're going to continue that way into the course of the rest of the evening. Now beyond that, there's really not that much out there. A few showers trying to pop up around uh, Bethel Springs, around Finger, a little bit of activity going on there, and dwindling showers around Corinth, just north of Kossuth. But beyond that, again, which is not as widespread a threat of thunderstorms as we saw yesterday. So definitely good news on that, and we'll continue again and monitor anything for the overnight hours and show you more about what's going on there. Let's take a look and see what's happening in and around the Mid-South area, which again, for right now, the big weather story is going to be the heat. Beautiful picture of sunset reflected clouds from our Bethel Springs Elementary Cam, and if you'd like to see more about that, all you have to do is go to wreg.com slash webcams for more pictures in and around the Mid-South area. From the Mars rover, one planet over, temperature of 0.4. Or minus 0.4 for a high temperature that was just about a couple of days ago, about a week ago or so. That was about one of the last times we've got a report from the Curiosity rover. The sun is basically between us and Mars at this time. So it's very difficult to get any information because the sun is acting as interference. So we'll hopefully get some more data coming up in the near future. Ground temperature as of about last Wednesday, 37 degrees above zero, 121 degrees below zero. So that gives you an idea as to the temperature swings on Mars. More about what to look for on Mars when it comes to weather information, mars.nasa.gov. Tons of great weather information if you'd like to take a look and see what's going on there. Earthquakes in the Mid-South, not that much to worry about. In fact, nothing in the last 24 hours, according to USGS and the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. Showers more widespread across much of the area. We're just not seeing, again, a lot of major activity. Should be mostly dying down into the next few hours. We 
could see a few of them linger into overnight and again tomorrow, but then they're going to become a little bit more diurnal happening during the day rather than the nighttime. And then we see again less of a chance of anything really heading our way anytime soon outside of just those random chances coming on through. But we'll take a look at the forecast here coming up in just a little bit. Speaking of which, let's take a look and see what's going on out there again for tonight. Again, isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. That's that green area. Could be some thunderstorms in the red hatched area. And that's, again, where we could hear some rumbles of thunder overnight. But so far, it does not look like a severe weather threat. And that goes right on into tomorrow around News Channel 3 Daybreak. That chance of showers and thunderstorms will continue through Tuesday at lunchtime. On Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, things will dry up a little bit. But then more chances of showers and thunderstorms as what's left of a backdoor cold front slowly makes its way into close to areas of the Mid-South. That's going to irritate the atmosphere just a little bit more to give us that potential for thunderstorms. And then another possibility of this coming our way as we get into around week's end as that next cold front might have just a little bit more oomph to make its way into the Mid-South. We'll see how well that goes coming up a little bit later. Main problem again for the next about 24 hours is going to be the heat and the humidity. And that's what the National Weather Service is doing by issuing this new heat advice advisory which will be going into effect tomorrow uh, afternoon from 1 o'clock in the afternoon through 8 p.m. on Wednesday. So they're expecting this heat wave to be about another 24 to 48 hours worth of heat and humidity. Heat index temperatures, again, the humidity with the temperature to get that feels like heat index. That's what we're going to be looking for. And more of that coming up again throughout the course of the next several days. So if you are going to be working or exercising outdoors, the counties shaded in orange are going to be the worst of the worst. And that does include the Memphis metro area. So keep that in mind if you're going to be doing anything outdoors, work or play. You want to make sure that you're well protected from anything going on there. And we'll keep you updated on whether or not that is expanded, canceled, curtailed, whatever. We'll let you know about that a little bit later. Let's take a look and see what's going on when it comes to your forecast. Again, we continue again to see the possibility of more chances of showers and thunderstorms off and on, but we just are not looking at a huge amount of activity out there. Isolated areas of showers and thunderstorms again later on tonight. High temperatures tomorrow, regular air temperatures back into about the lower to mid 90s. Again, heat index temperatures will be pushing around 105, could be close to around, oops, sorry about that, could be close to around 107 in northeast Arkansas, up around the boot heel of Missouri. So we could be looking at some pretty dangerous temperatures out there for working or exercising outdoors. So please keep that in mind if you have any plans for outdoors in the course of the next couple of days. So something to consider there. Let's go into tomorrow night, low temperatures, not that low back in the mid 70s. Again, things are not really looking anytime soon soon for a change. Isolated showers and thunderstorms Tuesday night into Wednesday. High temperatures on Wednesday, same thing as what we saw on Tuesday, back mainly in the lower to mid 90s once again. And the heat index temperature is well above into about the 105 to 110 degree range. Hopefully it won't get that hot, but it's a possibility. Low temperatures Wednesday night back into the mid 70s or so only. That's as cool as it gets. Thursday's temperatures again back in the mid 90s. A little bit more chance of a shower or thunderstorm up around northeast parts of the viewing area up around, say, Dyersburg into that location, northwest Tennessee and back toward the Tennessee River. Lows Thursday night into Friday back into around the mid to upper 70s and chances of rainfall back with us again, heaviest north and along of I-40. And then by Friday, high temperatures knocking off a little bit Good news for us, but again, that's going to be because most everybody will be seeing a chance of rain as we get into Friday night, and maybe some of that activity lingering its way into around Friday evening, so it could be some stronger weather taking place there, and low temperatures, a little cooler thanks to the rainfall, haven't seen upper 60s around here for quite some time, so at least we're picking up some good news anyway on that. Quick check into the weekend, high temperatures, upper 80s with, again, more chances of showers and thunderstorms, a little bit more limited, dropping on down to northern Mississippi. That should be about the worst of the worst. And what the heck, let's go ahead and skip ahead to Sunday. Temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, and that chance of showers and thunderstorms much less, uh, dropping down to the single-digit chances, so good news there. Hurricane Center, again, little if anything going on here. We've got a lot of activity about into the Pacific. We've got Greg Irwin, 
as tropical storms at this point in time, and pretty strong ones at that, nearly hurricane strength on uh, Irwin at this time, lined up and ready to go. Hillary is a hurricane. Uh, winds at this time, again, it has to be over 74 miles per hour to be considered a hurricane. This one at 85 miles per hour, so we've got some pretty good activity going on there. All that moving away, heading out into the central Pacific and heading toward Hawaii, but it's got a long way to go before it gets there. We're not seeing much of anything at this point in time where it comes to hurricane development in the Atlantic, and here's why. If you take a look at that area around the coast of Africa, that very light shaded color out there, not the dark green, but the light or yellow, that's dust being blown off the surface of the Sahara out into the atmosphere, and that does a good job of squashing any thunderstorm development, and even though there could be strong storm systems moving on through, the dust actually does a good job of kind of making certain that there's not enough heat, not enough irritation in the atmosphere to get things going, and this is also pretty cool. Some of that dust is basically making its way up and over portions of the United States. You can see some of that down around Houston, just south of the Mid-South that's being blown in from the Caribbean and is now situated right over the South Central United States. So even that is helping to kind of narrow the temperatures down by just a little bit. If you'd like to see more from this particular website, earth.nullschool.net, great place to go to for tons of weather information. Try to use this as often as possible, mainly because it just looks so darn cool. I mean, look at this. Something to take a look at there. Nice as a visual background to kind of take away the dead space from your computer desktop. International Space Station will be making a very bright pass tonight at just past 9.30. It's going to be going from the southwest horizon, very close to near Jupiter, around and through the Big Dipper, between the North Star and the North Horizon, and all the way to the Northeast Horizon through the W of Cassiopeia. That'll be about 944 or so as it gets a little bit closer to that area. One of the brighter passes of the ISS in the course of the last few passes out there. So again, rising in the southwest at just about... 9.38. It'll be above the haze layer at about 9.40 as it makes its way along the northern horizon, curving back around to the northeast. Big explosion on the sun. Our sunspot from about a week and a half ago that gave us that uh, flickering of the northern lights and got a gr tons of great pictures out there uh, that affected some communication satellites and some higher frequency radio bands. That sunspot is now pointing away from us out into the rest of the solar system. And this thing threw out right there. You can see that great big explosion. Here's a better look at what we saw. Massive explosion from this thing heading out into the solar system. If this had been directed toward us, this would have had far different consequences than that brief belch of energy that caused our uh, activity in the way of auroras the, about 10 days ago. This was monstrously big. Absolutely incredible. Could have been an X-class flare. Absolutely incredible to think about what may have happened at that time had that made its way on through. So interesting to take a look at that. More information available from spaceweatherlive.com. Great place to go to for tons more information about what's going on in the solar system. As of right now, sun surface is blank. Things are quiet. The sunspot that caused that big explosion on the opposite side broadcasting all that gas and everything away from us. More information about what to look for in the skies above and including atmospheric optics. Thanking News Channel 3 viewer Leslie Harwell. A great picture of a sun dog. You can see the sun on the left and the sun dog back toward the right hand side. Ice crystals in the clouds act as prisms. So it looks like a tiny little rainbow, but it's actually from the opposite direction, looking toward the sun instead of away, which is where you usually see a rainbow after the rain has gone past. In this case, a great view of some atmospheric optics from Leslie Harwell. Thank you very much for that. And thanks to everybody else for their contributions on my Facebook page. And don't forget to stop by more information and otherwise about weather, science, etc. on my Twitter page. That's at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Bright and early tomorrow morning, Tuesday, and through the rest of the upcoming work and or school week. Don't forget to join me for more information with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. That's on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. Would love to have you along for more information and tons more details as to what's going on in and around the Mid-South. Great show to listen to. Not just sports chat, but 
tons of other stuff available. So tune in if you can and listen in as we keep you updated on what's happening with news, weather, and sports across the Mid-South. That'll do it for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. We'll have more details on your complete forecast, again, coming up with Jim Jaggers tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. And don't forget about News Channel 3's Todd Demers, bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Live and direct from House Onik, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Don't forget, if you've got any questions or concerns, email me at austin.onik at wreg.com. Thanks for joining us for tonight's Weather Overtime, and stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.